I'm a physiologist studying vision, and I'm interested in the science of computer graphics because it might help us understand something about the way our brains make sense of what our eyes see. Even when we look at the real physical world, we're creating our perception of it inside our heads. Although our visual perception seems to be almost instantaneous and certainly effortless, in fact, it's an incredibly complex process. All that we know about the world out there is the flat picture of it that's formed on the retina of the eye. Our brains have to analyze that picture, and knowing the geometry of the world, come up with some kind of guess about the nature of the, the physical objects out in space. We take something like this cube here. Now, if you were to look at that cube straight on, all that you could see of it is one square, flat surface. In fact, if that's all you knew about it, you wouldn't even know that it's a cube at all. But from other viewpoints, you can see the other faces. Now, they may look to you to be square, but if you think about it, the image that's formed of each surface is not a square because of the laws of perspective. It's actually a trapezoid. And your brain's able to make use of those shapes to calculate the fact that this is a cube. Well, if it's complicated for something simple like a cube, imagine what it's like for a teapot that doesn't have any flat surfaces. It has a very complicated form. If you view it from different positions, the shape changes all the time, yet it appears to you to be a single, solid, three-dimensional object. Well, if our real view of the outside world is created from flat images, wouldn't it be possible to create an imagined world just by giving to the eyes the same flat images that they would actually see if they were to view the solid object in that imaginary world. That's what Renaissance painters struggled to find a systematic way of doing, presenting a flat image on canvas, which the brain would interpret as a view of something real. Nearly 500 years after Dürer, the technology is different, but the rules are just the same. Well, the same, but for one basic idea. A painter tries to create an image that will look like an object. With a computer, you invent the object and use the laws of physics and geometry to show you what you would see if the object were real. In the memory of a computer, an object is a set of codes, a set of numbers. Imagine a simple shape like our cube. How could we describe the position of the top right-hand corner? In this space, the top right-hand corner is seven divisions across from the left. The same corner is four divisions up from the floor. And the same corner again is seven divisions forward from the back. Seven across, four up, and seven forward. Three numbers to describe the position in space of each of the eight corners, making six faces or polygons. And it takes no more than school maths to work out where the rays of light from each corner to the viewer's eye would cross the screen for any point of view. More complex shapes can be broken down into individual polygons. As computers and their software develop, the realism of the images is bound to improve. But will anybody ever learn how to conjure a convincing performance out of their creations? If anybody does, it's unlikely to be a computer scientist, but a specialist in the art of breathing life and character into the unlikeliest of objects.
My background is in traditional animation, and then worked at Disney as an animator at the Disney Animation Studios for about five years. My greatest pleasure from the films that I create is to go into an audience, anonymous, sit down, listen to their reaction. You know, that's what I get out.